Do portfolio managers use cover call ETFs for their clients? Um, to answer that question, I'm joined by Martin Pelletier, Senior Portfolio Manager for TriVest Wealth at Wellington Altus Private Council. Martin, thank you for joining the channel. Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. So, you know, the whole purpose of this video, of course, is just to unpack that single question, because I feel like in the DIY investing community, these cover call products, they are debated a lot just amongst the, the retail segment, but the institutional segment or the, the the outsource segment, like portfolio management, doesn't get doesn't get nearly as much attention or if any. So in today's video, we are going to unpack that. So let's answer that question, Martin. Do portfolio managers use cover call ETFs in uh, for their clients and why? Well, it depends what kind of portfolio manager you are. Um, as a discretionary manager, um, it can be uh, relatively useful as a tool for managing risk and managing returns uh, for a number of different types of mandates out there. Uh, for the most part, um, traditional investment advisors and managers are, uh, are, are buying stocks and holding on to them and buying bonds and holding on to them. So there hasn't been a lot of uptake um, in, in, the, in the community from that perspective. But um, for those who are looking at expanding outside of the traditional in investment circle, then looking at products like uh, cover call strategies and ETFs can be helpful uh, for those, uh, for those uh, IAs or, or PMs. Right. So would you say that, um, so just kind of, um, just to lead off from what you were just saying there, um, I guess what you're maybe alluding to say, like banks, of course, they create their own products, their own sort of in-house, whether it's ETFs or mutual funds. Um, I take it that you're maybe saying that that these types of institutions aren't necessarily really using these products uh, for no. their clients. Yeah. And so when it comes to uh, launching a ETF, for example, you're going to there's a strong correlation in regards to the demand uh, for said products and a number of products coming out, obviously. And so you have to you know, feed the machine per se. And so the banks are looking at that. And we just came out of a, a really low interest rate environment and investors were searching out yield. And there wasn't a lot of yield out there um, outside of uh, looking at uh, high yield bonds, for example, which are, are, are somewhat risky. And, and so uh, the, the, the banks and, and manufacturers came to market with products that had a higher yield component to it to uh, garnish some of that market share. And that's how the, how the ETF industry works. It looks to where uh, investors' appetite is, and then it tries to feed them. Right. There has certainly been an explosion of uh, cover call ETFs in the past couple of years, uh, definitely 2021. 22 and 22, of course, and even this year, we continually uh, get these products kind of, um, they're continually being pumped out, it seems. And so I guess that begs the question, um, with the popularity of these funds, um, are are these, are our clients, um, I guess, attitudes or habits changing at all on a, on a broad enough scale from, say, buy and hold and waiting with more traditional products to you know, something that is very yield based that pays out immediately, um, whether that be for simply the satisfaction of, of, say, getting that monthly income or not. Well, I still think there's yield chasing. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can look where the flow goes. It goes towards those promising very high yields. And I would exercise some caution around that because there's a classic yield trap to investing on, on, the, on the premise of a yield on itself. And the reason being is you have to understand the nature of what a call is and what a cover call is and how that's going to impact the portfolio returns going forward. And it, that's the first step, not just look at the at the yield um, that's being offered by the ETF itself. And so I, I'll often not even look at the yield and, and just try and understand the underlying uh, sector 
um, that I'm looking at and then the fundamentals of that sector. And if it's uh, a sector that I think is flat to range bound, then, and if I, I, I normally, which I wouldn't own, um, but if I could do a, a, a covered call strategy on top of that to enhance the return profile um, on, a, on a segment that I think has been oversold, then it makes some sense for, uh, for me from that perspective. And then I'll look at the yield and look how sustainable that yield is. And, uh, and that's the type of analysis that I'll do as a portfolio manager. And I think you know, as a retail investor, do it yourself. You probably should undertake the same kind of process because when you see some of these yields at 14, 15%, even though there's leverage deployed, you may not even know that into some of these. And then they'll run a back test and they'll say, hey, if we apply the leverage to this, this is what the back test results are. Um, you know, Yeah, I, I wouldn't even do that. Just, the, just look at the underlying holdings, uh, look at how the sector performs um, and, uh, in, in volatile periods, how it performs in interest rate periods like we're in right now. So there's a lot of uh, analysis that needs to go into it prior to... Uh, just buying uh, on a uh, yield expectation, that's for sure. Of course. And um, I guess like have, have, has the use of uh, these products been, have these products been adopted, the cover call ETF strategy, have they been adopted by um, um, like the portfolio management industry as a whole, say over the last couple of years, or has this been something that's been more normalized, maybe longer than that? Um, so we traded options for uh, uh, actively for 10 years. So we've got a good background in understanding the nature of derivatives. Um, uh, large pension plans, institutional managers, obviously, I mean, they will undertake any sort of strategy that can help um, create alpha and minimize the, the level of risk. And derivatives can be a good tool to do that. And so larger institutions will do it themselves. Uh, we did it ourselves on equities uh, from from that standpoint, but for a quick and easy uh, doing it on a on a sector, for example, um, then it, I mean you could do it yourself on a um, on a spider, for example, on the on the S and P five hundred if if you know you understand how to do options. But um, so on the institutional side, to do that. But for us, like a quick and easy is looking at the utility sector and seeing how oversold it was and seeing the outlook being probably flat um, and representing a good yield with a cover call strategy on it um, that was sustainable, we think is was a good near-term trade. And so that's the approach that we'll take a look at it instead of saying, I'm going to buy this and hold on to it and it's going to pay me 9% for the rest of my retirement. That's not the case because cover call strategies have underperformed simply pure long strategies or long dividend type of strategies over the longer term. And so you have to look at it from a risk management tool perspective rather than just a, a buy and hold and forget about it. Gotcha. So uh, I guess I guess what's often, um, of course, um, chased and just in uh, like for all investors, we all want, you know, of course, the maximum return possible, but perhaps not all investors are necessarily interested in, the, in that. So, of course, that's where cover call strategies come in. They offer 10, 12. I mean, there are some out there, the yield max shares that are offering 40, 60, like they're, they're completely out, like, have these outrageous, outlandish yields. Um, so, I guess I, I guess I just, I wonder if, um, is is a product like this for someone who maybe isn't uh, doesn't want to necessarily chase maximum return? They're willing to maybe simply give up, um, say, holding on to uh, like an S and P five hundred ETF for um, maybe their horizon is say 20, 30 years, where they can get this cover call ETF, and they're like, look, I I know I'm going to get paid the you know the way that the market looks today. Uh, we got, of course, inflation and we got interest rates. We got the sovereign debt crisis. We got geopolitical tensions all across the world. So now, like for people who are who are say like like I, I I'm interested in cover call ETFs. I understand the, the regular buy and hold strategy of holding, say, an S&P 500 fund. But maybe I want the cover call version of that S&P 500 because, you know, I, at least I do get that downside protection with it. And it's going to give me ten percent, and just so I can sleep at night, I'm I'm hoping that 
this fund can simply perform at that, say, 10% level. I mean, what would you maybe say to those people who aren't necessarily chasing that total return? Okay, so um, I'll back it up. How Mark's put out a really good letter recently, it came out a couple of days ago. And investing is about risk control and consistency. Um, the best foundation for above average long-term performance is absence of disasters. And the way you can achieve, achieve superior returns is to produce stunning returns with tolerable risk, which is uh, obviously very, very difficult to do, or the ability to produce good returns with minimal risk. And uh, our investment philosophy is around the latter. And, and so covered calls are just one strategy, okay? And as a long-term buy and hold, um, in my opinion, it's not the go-to strategy as just simply buy and hold and generate a absolute return because um, the upside capture is given away by the call right and the premium, sure, it could be high, but over the longer term, um, the return profile is probably not sufficient to meet uh, a lot of investors' goals and objectives, let's say a 6 to 8% rate of return. And, and so you're you're better to use it as a tool um, within a, a portfolio. And there are some, some, and it's an excellent tool within a portfolio, but it shouldn't be the only tool that you use um, outside of trying to generate a return beyond uh, the, the going along the market. I'll give you an example. So in our portfolios, um, we're still long uh, a percentage of the market. And even for our 60, 40 portfolio holders, we're still long, pure long, 30 to 45% of the market. I want to capture that, that, that upside growth exposure. And I don't know where that growth exposure is going to come from. So I'll just own the market itself. Um, we'll complement that with um, some alternative strategies that can go up to 40%. Um, of which a portion of that will be covered call strategies in certain segments of the market. And so um, as a, a portfolio manager, and that's where I'll, I'll talk from because that's where my business is and that's where my, my experience is, it fits very well within that overall component. Um, so as a, as a regular investor, um, going 100% into a covered call strategy to generate an, an absolute rate of return over the longer term, Probably not the best thing to do, but having a portion of your portfolio within certain cover call strategies, probably not a bad thing to do. And so I'm not a binary all or nothing, for example. I want to look at things from an intrinsic value and cash flow. And so that's the bottom line. What am I owning as an owner? What's the basket of stocks within that ETF that I'm owning? What are the cash flows that I'm going to get? What is the predictability of that cash flow? And then what is the terminal value and judgment day? And so I look at all of that combined, and then that gives me that kind of return that I want to get. But I also want to get that safety net on that terminal value and judgment day. And so, um, you know, cover calls can help a little bit with that. Um, there are some other strategies uh, that we utilize, like structured notes that we think are, are outstanding. Um, but from a cover call perspective itself, it doesn't have a fit within an overall portfolio, but doing it all, all binary, all or nothing um, is probably, and it may not be what you want to hear, but you know, it, it, it certainly is a really good tool from a portfolio manager's perspective. You know, of course, one of my, um, one of my goals with, of course, this channel is not to be a quote unquote bro about, about yeah. these products. Now, Personally, I actually do invest 100%. And I, yeah. I've, I've, t I've told people, of course, from pretty much day one, this is the stuff I've owned. I started investing, you know, as a, a what would be the term, a coronial investor. I started in investing yeah. in 2020 at the age of 30 years old and 33 now um, and uh, started in dividend growth. And yeah. of course, everybody felt like a genius back then because it didn't matter what you touched. It seemed like everybody sort of had that Midas touch. And um, and then over the course of time, you know, it wasn't that I, I I followed anybody in particular. It wasn't that I latched on to an influencer of any kind. I just I was just I just did my own reading, and you know, and I it, it was funny because I I I was in the middle of doing like a different YouTube channel that talked about anyway different stuff, not cover calls at all. And then, you know, I stopped that and then took a big hiatus from YouTube and then 
just um, got into these, uh, started reading more about cover call ETFs. Okay, who, what kind of podcasts, YouTube, what kinds of readings, like, sign, uh, yeah. like say a good book in this regard would be The Income Factory. I forget the author's name, but Income Factory. And uh, the, so I decided, you know what, I'm I'm going to go in on all in on this. Yeah. Like I understand it, it, it is a polarizing topic and, but it's also just to uh, bring honesty. And part of that is conversations like these, right? Because you certainly in the, in the um, internet communities and the threads and the reddits of the world, it really does seem like a um, 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 sort of either you're this or you're that, but we all yeah. we know that of course the life is much more nuanced than that, and um, there is gray. And uh, being a hybrid investor of both is typically it, it's totally fine. And um, and but also of course I'm trying to spread awareness about and just helping people understand these uh, understand the use cases for these products. So for say say if someone is say a hybrid investor and they want to say use these products. Um, would there be uh, like a good sort of as a just sort of baseline average percentage that but you know whether it be in a flat market would it be like twenty five percent of the portfolio or is it just simply like look you got to understand it best for yourself your goals I think I already know the answer to that you're gonna right but would you say that say from um, the portfolio management perspective would it be say ten percent of the portfolio fifteen twenty percent it depends a lot on the market environment and the sec sec sectors that you're looking at and the weightings of those sectors in your portfolio. So for example, again, looking at the utility sector um, as a percentage of whatever the percentage that is, as it represents of your portfolio, um, the outlook for that segment is I think fairly flat. And so adding a call strategy on top of those companies it's probably not a bad thing to do. Financial services, same thing in Canada. Um, whatever weighting that is as a percentage of your portfolio, having a, a chunk of that or a larger chunk of that within cover calls is probably not a bad strategy right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and the, those who have, have um, access to uh, or are weighting towards the megas and big tech, um, I think that that they've gotten way ahead of themselves. So doing at the money cover calls as an exit strategy, probably not a bad strategy to, to exit. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, and, and, and those, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to give tax advice here, but, uh, and, and I encourage you to talk with your accountant, but if you're doing call writing itself, um, you know, the classification of, of it being as capital gains can also be beneficial um, for doing the, the underwriting of those calls yourself. Now, um, that's how I would address the weightings. Um, if I had to look at the a TSX versus a covered call on the TSX, I'd probably just buy the TSX itself. And but within, if you are managing your portfolio within the subsectors within that, I think you could add some alpha that way by doing cover call strategies within those segments you think are probably doesn't have, don't have a lot of upside. And for those who do that ha does have upside um, like energy, for example, we do own the ENCC, which is a cover call strategy called co cover call rate on some of these energies, but most of our portfolio is simple long because I want to get that upside capture as much as possible. And I want to get access to that cash flow. Um, um, and if I get a little bit of option cash flow on top of that, that's great. You could destabilize the portfolio. And so, there, yes, there is some some complexity involved with it. But um, do it, do it yourself, investors. You'd be surprised. The number of ones I've talked to do a lot of research. They, read, they follow podcasts like yourself and and uh, and your YouTube channel, and 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 they're listening to people who devoted a large part of their portfolios like yourself to that segment to learn as much as possible. So you're doing them a real big service uh, from that basis. But again, um, we're not dualistic. We're not like there's, there's a, a whole uh, community out there that are, you got to own dividends and who cares about the underlying value and you got to own dividends. And there's a whole community towards owning momentum and growth. There's a whole community towards owning discounted value. Um, I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want to get my clients six to eight 
for the most of our clients anyway, in that range bound and minimize the risk as much as possible. And we're doing it and we'll use tools like covered call strategies. And there'll be periods that we won't own any of them. And there'll be periods like now that we do. Right. Which is, which is the, actually segues into the next question I was going to ask is, um, say during bull markets, I take it you guys aren't using these these kinds of strategies at all. If you're confident that, like, we we got some runway in a bull market. Well, if if I did believe that the Canadian financials had bottomed, um, then I would under, uh, own that segment of the market itself because I want to capture again. There's there's this the, the when you're putting a dollar down, you want to get two birds in, in the bush. And when you get those birds out of the bush and are there two birds in there? And, and if there's a growth component, there's a cash flow component and then a growth component um, that helps me get those two birds out sooner, then I want to maximize that. And my job is to look at the fundamentals underlying that segment of the market. And if there's some momentum and some growth there, I want to capture that a portion of it. And, um, and, and so, yeah, uh, on, a, on, a, on a very strong market, I don't want to be giving away that upside. Now, having said that, um, we have clients that have a, a very large you know, position in a stock um, that they may work for that company or um, they may have, have inherited it, whatever the case may be. We'll use cover call strategies as a, as a tool for us to exit from said position. And if not, we generate some really good income off of that. And so that kind of a philosophy is understanding what a call is, understanding what a put is, and and then you know utilizing that in context of the situation is very important to to understand. And so I would encourage your followers to to look at at, at beyond look at all options and how they work um, and the payoff profiles and understanding that, um, and then understanding how they they the pricing of them work as well. Um, and and the opportunity set. Great example is with uh, when you're selling insurance um, and you're you look at the BP rig disaster. Uh, the insurance on the BP rig before the disaster was really cheap. After the disaster, the insurance was really expensive. And what do you think the probability of a disaster immediately following that event was? It probably was very 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 low because everyone else is saying, "Hey, we got to look at our our own situation here and make sure this doesn't happen." So that's the right. premium went up a lot and the probabilities went down. So under, I mean, that's a, a simple example, but um, again, understanding how that works with, uh, with, with pricing of calls, for example. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Martin, I think, you know what, I think we'll, we'll end it there. Um, thank you for coming on with me to discuss uh, the cover call ETFs. And of course the use cases with them from a portfolio manager like yourself um, for anybody watching and uh, you're interested in whether, I guess, chatting or you want to email Martin Pelletier here, uh, just visit. You, know, you could easily Google search uh, Martin Pelletier at Trivest Wealth and you'll be able to easily um, just find the contact information there. So I encourage you all to do that. And hopefully you all enjoyed uh, what we just chatted about here. Let me know down in the comments uh, just what you think, um, especially as I try to build out more sort of short form uh, interviews like this. Uh, if there's other people you want me to contact and 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 ask a question of somebody, then please uh, by all means do so. and I'll we'll I'll talk to you all in the next video.